you still have the monetary policy side of things that could affect Ethereum very negatively. And what is that, right? Well, as soon as you enable withdrawals in a bear market where the price of Ethereum is crashing and you're in the middle of a recession, you're more likely to have people pull out. Why is that? Well, obviously, like investors are going to want to be in a higher, heavier cash position, at least historically. Uh, rich people like to be in a better in more of a cash position in these circumstances. So, you know, and they say that all of their validators are rich, right? Which is why they don't need to unstake, which was an argument I got from one of the devs on Twitter. Um, my Twitter's fun. It's tons of fun. I need to uh, pause Twitter for the weekend, I think, though, because it's, uh, it's not fun. It's a nightmare. <laughs> So that's kind of where we're at, but that doesn't solve everything for Ethereum, of course, because if it did, you know, it wouldn't be Ethereum. Here's an opinion piece. The merge doesn't solve Ethereum's atomic composability. Now, here's the thing. We've been talking about all the things the merge doesn't solve for Ethereum for a long time. Unfortunately, that puts us in a position where it's kind of like a, yes, a, kind of like a, I told you so. We're seeing Ethereum just absolutely tank. I think it's now dropped below uh, 1300. And, you know, a lot of what was expected post-merge, the, the hopium, the price going up to $10,000 a coin because it's deflationary. You know, we said that's probably not going to be the case. I think I called a $723 price point for Ethereum post-merge. Primarily based on the fact that it is no longer proof of work, but that was kind of just a fun uh, theoretical basis of like moving out of the total market supply of proof of work coins into the total supply of proof of stake coins. But, you know, the emerge didn't solve scalability. It, it you know, doesn't solve the fees necessarily. Um, it puts ETH in a deflationary state, meaning that eventually they have to change the monetary policy. Otherwise, they'll just burn all of the ETH in existence and there won't be any ETH left anymore to do anything with it. Lots of weird stuff going on with ETH. But this is, there's also this issue of what atomic composability is, which hopefully we're going to answer here, and why cross-pollination between decentralized application matters. So the merge of Ethereum's network is a significant accomplishment in the history of the open source software and Web3. I would say I agree with that. Moving from proof of work to proof of stake, this is really the first time it's been done, especially at this scale. I think that's impressive from a technical standpoint. Okay. Um, so I would agree with that. For the most part, this transition from the more energy intensive proof of work consensus mechanism to the less energy intensive proof of stake has been celebrated for its increasingly sustain increased sustainability. But while the story of the day is about energy conservation, the merge skirts a looming problem for Ethereum. Network updates after the merge are intended to finally begin improving Ethereum's scalability. But these proposals threaten the viability and sustainability of a healthy Web3 ecosystem. Atomic composability, which made decentralized finance on Ethereum possible to begin with, becomes compromised. And when you break atomic composability, you hinder the very thing that makes an ecosystem truly sustainable long term. So what is it? Atomic composability is a technical term for saying that any application on a network can frictionlessly interact with any other application. Ethereum is going to consciously break composability by segregating parts of its network from each other in the implementation of sharding or layer two systems. To make this concept more concrete, let's consider the health of a rainforest or a desert. Without pollinators, one third of all our edible fruits and vegetables would not grow, according to experts. You've most likely heard about the declining bee population, but the story repeats itself over and over and over again all over the world. The destruction of agave plants for tequila production jeopardizes the survival of the bats that pollinate while the most important cactus in the desert putting the entire ecosystem at risk. Whaling ultimately leads to the destruction of fish stocks. The fact is biodiversity is essential for the survival and growth of natural ecosystems and when this cycle is threatened the consequences are far reaching and devastating. As far back as 2009, the Economics of Ecosystems and Biodiversity Organization put out a report highlighting just how much 
economic value for humans is directly connected to ecosystem biodiversity, including up to 50% of the pharmaceutical industry and 100% of the agricultural industry, among many others. So if biodiversity is so important and valuable for physical ecosystems, why wouldn't the application diversity be essential for survival and growth of digital ecosystems? The answer is it is. The more application diversity within an ecosystem, the more its apps are able to cross-pollinate with each other, leading to a more robust, resilient ecosystem that can fuel all kinds of growth. This can also lead to a new species of applications and new wealth creation for humans who rely on them. Now, from the miner's perspective, what are we really looking at here? Well, compare the miners to the bees. Basically, Ethereum has essentially made a, a huge uh, portion of their ecosystem extinct by removing proof of work. The uh, proof of work miners were basically the worker bees going around and cross pollinating all of the DeFi systems, right? Uh, you had basically Polygon Matic payouts from pretty much every single mi mining pool. What did that allow? Well, that allowed cross pollinization of Polygon Matic and Ethereum and led to greater biodiversity. You had uh, additional payout systems of Binance Smart Chain adding to the transactions happening on the network and basically cross pollinating BSC with Ethereum. You had two miners paying out in Bitcoin, cross-pollinating Bitcoin and Ethereum. You had miners participating in DeFi, adding to and borrowing for building up, of course, their systems on platforms like Aave. You had essentially miners participating within liquidity pools on Uniswap, adding more into there. You had more stuff coming in. So consider this from the, this perspective. Now, this isn't going to go through this whole path, but this is very important to bring up. You can basically say from the very perspective that the miners were the worker bees and they have completely made miners extinct and it will affect, of course, the biodiversity within, of course, Ethereum. So protecting the four superpowers is the key to Web3 eco-diversity. Web3 has four superpowers, tokenization, decentralized applications, two-sided markets with intermediaries and composability. Taking away one of these superpowers by walling off certain applications from each other through specific types of blockchain sharding or layer two implementations, as nearly every smart contract, uh, smart contract platform does, is like separating the bat from the plant it pollinates. We're witnessing the impact of our world as we destroy natural diversity, separating flora and fauna from the ecosystems in which they have thrived and are interdependent. Now at the dawn of Web3, as we look to the birth of the most dynamic, flourishing digital ecosystem from the future of global finance, we can't afford to make the same mistake. Decentralized networks that preserve uh, all four uh, superpowers, including atomic composability, will give emergent digital ecosystems the most room to flourish. Anyways, I think it was a really interesting opinion piece that can be tied directly to mining in general. I'd like to hear your thoughts and opinions about that, of course. You know, did essentially, and what we're seeing too on the network, I mean, this is actually proving out to be true. There are, uh, there is a significant amount of, of reduced interactions on the Ethereum blockchain since miners have left. Um, but I'd like to hear your thoughts and opinions on that, of course, as well. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Crypto Mining Show. You can check out the full episode here or more crypto content down here. Also, I'd like you to check out my locals page at sonofatech.locals.com where you can become a member for free or choose to be a $5 a month supporter that unlocks additional content.